G'day guys, Dane here. Welcome back to Clarkie's NRL Show, Episode 2. Joined by a very, very special guest today. We have Queensland Maroons front row, Jai Arrow on the phone. Jai, how are you this afternoon? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, yeah, how are you? Yeah, very good. I'll start off by like saying it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show now. First off, I have to ask, cool, cool, how is the ankle tracking? Yeah, the ankle is very good. Um, I'm probably about three and a half weeks into my rehab and mm-hmm. um, I haven't had really major problems so far. I've done a few uh, light running sessions on the Alta G and um, yeah, it's going really well. Mm. And um, so would you say you're behind schedule, ahead of schedule at this stage? What uh, round do you think you may be back in at this stage? I honestly think so. They gave me six weeks, which we worked out would be round 19. And um, I'm on track for that, um, that round so far. And if, if all goes well, then um, you know I probably won't rush it. I just want to make sure it's 100% and, and make sure that it's right. So uh, I won't be rushing back too soon, but mm-hmm. um, I want to be at out there sooner rather than later exactly now Jai talk to me you're on top of the world you just won the Origin series opener everything is going perfect and then injury strikes I wanted to ask sort of how tough has that been mentally if at all yeah it's obviously been pretty hard Um, you know I sort of knew straight away when I did my ankle that it was going to put me out for the rest of the Origin series and um, you know I was two days away from going back into camp for the second game. And, um, you know, I sort of come to terms with it pretty quick. Uh, you know, I sort of just didn't want to kick stones and, you know, suck about that I just had an injury and it was going to put me out for a certain amount of time. I just wanted to uh, make sure I got my rehab right. And obviously, it can be a bit tough at times, but, um, you know, that's the trade we're in and that's the game we're in. So, um, yeah, I'll be right and I'm sure I'll come back bigger and better um, come round 19, round 20. I can guarantee that also. Let's go back to the injury real quick. Sort of when it first happened, what was going through your mind? Was it just the physical pain of the injury or did your mind straight away go to the mental side of things where, crap, I'm going to miss Origin? No, nah, it was more the physical side of things. It was, probably, it was the worst injury I've had. I've had a pretty good um, run with injuries. This is the worst I've had and it's only put me up six weeks. But it was more the uh, physical side of it. My physio was telling me to roll over on my back and um, I was in that much pain. I, um, you know, I didn't listen to him. I pretty much just stayed where I was, and he, um, you know, he, he kind of tested my ankle, and I, um, I, I can't really repeat what I said, but I gave him an um, almighty spray, and uh, um, yeah, he wasn't feeling too good. That's for sure. Mm, yeah, no doubt. I was actually at that game against the Warriors, and I got to admit, when I saw you go down, my heart just absolutely dropped. Let's go back to <laughs> Origin real quickly, Jai. Now, obviously, you were involved in the series opener. You were a big reason why Queensland won. Fast forward to Game Two, and obviously, I think no one predicted a 32-point victory by the Blues. And a lot of people said that's the Jai Arrow effect. I mean, you can't really put 32 points down to one player in rugby league. But when you hear so many professionals and fans alike all coming together and saying that's how important Jai Arrow is, how does that make you feel? Is that humbling or...? Yeah, very. It's very humbling. Um, mm. You know, I'm not too sure whether I would have been a 32-point difference, but um, to have, you know, such, you know, I guess, um, you know, players of, of the game to say that stuff, it's pretty humbling mm. and... I sort of, um, you know, can't sort of try and pinch myself every day that um, I sort of have those people saying those things about me. But, um, you know, I consider myself a pretty level-headed guy and I don't want to really get ahead of myself and I make sure I'm always on my toes and always working hard and um, always making sure that, um, you know, I do my best and, and, you know, give everything, um, you know, 100%. Mm. What do you attribute to your just fantastic rise in rugby league, Jai? Because three years ago, you were starting to make a name for yourself with the Broncos, starting to get a little bit known. You said then, level-headed, hard work. What are the main attributes that have made Jai Arrow one of the best forwards in the entire world in a, in a matter of less than three years? Oh, look, I think it just comes down to hard, hard work. Um, mm-hmm. I've I worked my ass off. You know, since I was a little kid to to where I am now, and um, my parents always drove that into me. Is you know, if you want to get somewhere, you've always got to work hard, and it's something that um, I've always taken on board. And I'm very lucky with this um, situation that I'm in at the moment. And mm. um, you know, obviously, your injury doesn't help, but um, it's definitely hard work. And 
you know, growing up, I wasn't the most talented kid growing up, but I was always willing to work hard. And, you know, I could, I could name, you know, hundreds of kids that were probably more talented than me to growing up. But um, I, I guess I just had the hunger for it and, and I loved hard work and I loved, um, you know, playing rugby league, which, which is definitely a bonus. And Yeah. Yeah, you touched on your sort of childhood there. Let's go, a kid, a young kid's come up to you, Joe, and he said, what is your number one tip because I want to make the NRL and be just like you one day. What would you sort of tell that young fella? Oh, look, the first thing I'd, I'd have to say to him is you have to be passionate about the game. If, yep. you know, if, you, don't, if you don't love it, then um, you know, why would you do it? But you know, if you have the passion for the game, it's just to always stick at it and never give up and always keep working hard because... You know, there's a saying, a hard work beats talent, and I've seen that, you know, so many times over the years where you know, there's so many talented kids coming through and stuff like that, but um, the ones that fall off are the ones that aren't willing to work hard and aren't willing to um, put the work in to, to get where, you know, a lot of people um, have been. Absolutely. That's a great message. Now, Jai, I really don't want to go back there because, you know, I'm a Queenslander as well, but I have to ask, how frustrating was it watching game two and three? Because footage did emerge of you on the sideline when Tedesco scored probably it sucks to say but one of the greatest rugby league tries um, of all time we saw your reaction it was it was a raw just just overwhelmed you just couldn't believe it now it's sort of settled and you can reflect on game two and three how frustrating it is it and going through it at the time what, what sort of emotions were you feeling uh, watching the Blues win both those games Oh, it was definitely pretty hard. Um, mm-hmm. It's always hard sitting off the field, no matter whether it's Origin or for club. But mm-hmm. um, you know, the second game was pretty hard to watch. That was um, probably the one that killed me the most. Was um, you know sitting at home watching it on TV, and mm-hmm. um, I, I actually I asked Kevy if I could go down to the third game. I was heading down there anyway, um, but uh, I asked him if I could go, go to the game and watch it from the bench, and he said that was no worries at all. And obviously, that that last try was. Oh, it was pretty shattering, I think, for the whole state, not only myself, but, um, you know, that's footy. It's something you have to put up with. And, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be the boys and myself will be working hard and make sure that uh, we bring that trophy home next year. Absolutely. Fingers crossed. Now, Captain CJ, I've got to ask about it because obviously with what you've just told me there, Kevin values, values you immensely in this team. The fans, everyone looks at you, Jai, and says... Jai Arrow is a future captain of the Queensland Maroons. When you hear that, how does that make you feel? And would you one day be interested in leading your state as the captain? Oh, well, that's a hard one, to be honest. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not a guy who, who says many words, but okay. um, I'm, I'm someone who tries to lead with their actions. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, to have, have the caliber of um, people that have said that, it, it's pretty hard. It's, it's, you know, it's weird growing up as a little kid and, you know, <laughs> not knowing where I guess my future was heading and um, ended up making it all ended up making my NRL debut was, was my dream. And, um, you know, I did that and then I got the opportunity to play origin, which I never ever thought would ever happen in, you know, in my life. And, um, and, and now to be, I guess, tossed up where people saying that I'm a leader and stuff, it's, it's sort of mind boggling. I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of weird. I just, um, you know, if that day does come, I'd obviously try and take it with both hands and do the best job I possibly can. But, um, you know, as I said, I don't say too much. I'm, I'm sort of just one who goes out there and goes about his own business and making sure I do my job right. And then, um, you know, hopefully the boys are doing their job right around me. Mm. Just from that response there, Jai, I can tell how humble you are. But I have to ask and I have to say, you are one of the best forwards in the world. In less than four months' time, rival clubs can come knocking on your door with contract offers. Now, I know we've spoken, and you told me you leave that all to your manager, but in a perfect world, what does Jai Arrow want? Um, oh, obviously, oh, I'm very happy up here. Um, it's home for me. I grew up here, and um, yep. you know, I've, I've loved the opportunities that the club's given me, and uh, Breno's given me as well, so... Um, obviously, I'm happy here and would love to stay. So, um, you know, that's definitely something I'll be looking at. Hmm. Well, look, Jai, as a Titans fan, I can only say one thing to the club. Show him the money. Jai, we'll get you out of here <laughs> on this question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're yet to make your international debut, but as I've reminded everyone throughout this interview, you are one of the best forwards in the world. Now, the you played Auckland Nines for the Broncos, 
So <laughs> a bit of a double-ended question here. First off, I'll say, how did you find that experience? And would debuting for Australia in the World Nines at Bankwest later this year interest you? Um, the, the Nines was um, an unbelievable experience. I hadn't played first grade and mm-hmm. um, you know, sort of got to go over and experience playing against um, you know some of the best in the NRL. And um, at the end of the year, oh, look, I think it'd be a great. I'd, there's no chance I'd be getting picked for the Australian Nines team, but I'd like to see the concept come in, and um, you know it'd be a great day for the fans. It'd sort of be like the Rugby Union Sevens, maybe get all the fans dressed up and you know make a day of it or make a weekend of it, and mm. um, you know then they could go there for the weekend and, and you know see some of the uh, most talented rugby league players on show in a in a Nines format. Well, Jai, you are too humble. I would say you're a big chance to make your debut saying you're no chance that is ludicrous Jai I thank you so much for your time today on Clarkie's NRL show you're an absolute legend and it was a pleasure to have you on thanks mate appreciate it